Hi, I'm Willem. Have you ever experienced kindness in a way that totally changed your day or the way you thought about something? I remember when I was in college, I was super busy with a bunch of projects, and I was so busy that I was forgetting to eat. After a couple of days, one of my friends came to my room with an apple and a plate of peanut butter crackers, and he didn't leave until he made sure I ate all of it. It was really nice to know that there was someone there looking out for me, wanting to make sure that I was taking care of myself. In today's God's story, we're still tracking with Moses, so let's see how kindness played a role in his story. Let's check it out. What do we want? Low flying airplane noises. When do we want them? Well, hello again. I'm still Jamie Robertson and I'm still glad to see you. Years ago, I went back to my hometown. I grew up in Western Canada and I hadn't been home in years. And so I had a three day layover. So it was great. I was gonna see a couple close friends that I grew up with. And I just blasted out on social media. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna be at this restaurant at this time. If anybody wants to come, it'd be great to see you. And I wasn't really expecting much. One of the greatest nights of my life developed in that people from all walks of my life, all different phases from, from elementary school to, to when I was a, a youth pastor to high school to my trouble some days. Everybody liked that. People I'd worked with, people I'd been friends with for years, people I'd been friends with for only like one year and hadn't talked to in, in 10 years. So I sat in this huge table and I saw all these different people from all these different phases of my life, getting along, becoming friends, some of them exchanged numbers and are friends to this day. A true gift. It was a kindness of them to show up, even if it was just for a couple hours, just to see me. And that kindness blessed me to this day. It's been years since I've been back again. I still think of that as one of the greatest moments of my life. And our big idea is that God's kindness brings people together. So as our story picks up, Moses is in Midian, not Egypt. Now he had to flee Egypt, even though he was a prince there, because he had learned along the way that he was biologically Hebrew. And when he saw an Egyptian slave master abusing a Hebrew slave, Moses lost his mind. He snapped, he attacked the Egyptian and killed him. And prince or not, that's murder. So he fled. Now he's in the land of Midian. He's been in the desert wandering. And in this land, he finds a well. And while sitting there, seven women show up to do basically the exact same thing. They're gonna, they're gonna water their flocks, their sheep. And while they're there, another group of shepherds comes up and they're very violent and they, they have very violent intentions toward these women. Now Moses, the man trying to flee his violent past, still has this sense of, of justice within him. So he attacks the shepherds. And so he defended the women successfully and chased these other shepherds away. Now stop for a second and just sort of think. Life in those days, especially for women, was incredibly hard, uh, incredibly dangerous and isolating. They did not have a lot of social status. They did not have a lot of roles outside of being uh, a daughter and a mother. So for Moses, the prince of Egypt, to even intervene in this situation, to seek their safety over and above fellow men, is truly remarkable. And then he goes even a step further and waters their sheep, gives, gives water to their sheep and helps them out even more. And I like this because it, it, it reminds me of the compassion that Pharaoh's daughter showed to him when he was a baby. Like he was raised in her home and that, that compassion apparently has, has continued on into Moses even though he has this violent past. So now our story picks up in Exodus chapter two. We're gonna read verses 18 to 20. When the girls returned to Ruel, their father, he asked, why are you back so soon today? An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, they answered. And then he drew water for us and watered our flocks. Then where is he? Their father asked. Why did you leave him there? Invite him to come and eat with us. So this is the theme behind today's God story. It's that kindness brings people together. So as those seven women who turn out to be daughters come back to their father's tent and their father's known by two names, Ruel and Jethro. I'm gonna use the name Jethro because I think it's more fun to say. So Jethro asks them why they're back and they explain the story. He says, bring this man in, this, this stranger, so I can thank him for the kindness that he extended to my daughters. Now at that time in history, remember that Moses is, is really on his own and that's an incredibly dangerous place to be. Family is not just what binds us together and, and unites us and teaches us how to see the world. Family, especially in that day and age, kept you alive. 
So Jethro brings Moses into his tent to thank him. He invites him into his family, and again, just like under Pharaoh's daughter, Moses finds himself adopted into a new family in a new land. Jethro's daughter, Zipporah, is gonna end up becoming Moses' wife. And they're gonna have a wonderful family together, including having a son named Gershom. Does this let Moses off the hook for what he did in Egypt? No, and we are gonna come back to that, so just hold on to that for a bit. But this is a story of grace. This is a story of kindness. Moses showed a kindness to Jethro's daughters. Jethro, in turn, shown kindness to Moses. And because of that, Moses was brought into this family. Our God always teaches us to, to look out for others, to do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, to look after the least of these, because it's in those acts of kindness that, that people are brought together, that we're knit together into friendships. And as you all know, I hope, friends can become another kind of family, which not only teach you how to see the world and, and give you great memories and times together, but in a very real way, keep you alive. Now this story reminds us that, that kindness can breed kindness. And when two people are willing to, to forego their own roles, their own status, their own egos, you can actually create a family. And this is what this story shows us, is that God's kindness brings people together. God's desire is for us to be together, to be a family with him as the father of us all. All right. The story's just heating up because now we have Moses out of Egypt in Midian. He's out of the Pharaoh's family. He's into Jethro's family. But Moses and Egypt are not done with each other yet. And that is a tale for next time. So for right now, I'm Jamie Robertson. I am me. You are you. Both of those things make me very happy. And we'll see you next time. Wow, that was two great examples of kindness. Moses showed kindness by rescuing the sisters from the shepherds, and then he received kindness from their dad when he let him stay with their family. Let's check in with our friend Douglas and see the impact that a neighbor's kindness had on him. Watch this. I'm a huge social butterfly, and I love to be around people. I love the happiness around people, and I'm a happy person myself. My name is Doug, and there's more than meets the eye. A lot of my friends think I'm an extrovert, but at home, my family thinks I'm a huge introvert. I came to Canada when I was 13, and we didn't have family here. It's just me, my siblings, and my mom. So we were really concise in a, in a place, and I didn't have really anybody to talk to other than my siblings and my family. Being lonely, I had nothing else to do at home, so what I would do is I would go to the library, read some books, and to kill more time, I would go into the basketball courts and shoot the ball around, as long as it killed time, and uh, that, that, was, that was all I needed. We had a neighbor, she was really nice. She came in and gave me uh, a dumbbell. It was really random, but I made the best use of it because I didn't have the chance to go outside and play with friends, so I just ended up doing a lot of push-ups and a lot of dumbbell curls. Also in school, I, I didn't have a lot of friends. I made just one, and he ended up uh, helping me throughout the whole process. He invited me to a lot of stuff. You know, we built a great relationship as time went on, and uh, it, it was just awesome because that, that meant a lot to me as, a, as an individual. So in university, I ended up uh, at a orientation. I made a joke. Everyone loved it. I became the social butterfly that I am now and ended up becoming the first year rep as time went on and ended up as their president. The relationship I ended up building up with that one friend uh, ended up taking me out of place through our university and I'm coming out of university and even still being friends, going to church together, going to home church together, being our youth together. And honestly, it just building a relationship with him helped me build a lot of relationships with a lot of people. We do almost everything a boy would do with friends. Honestly, play video games together, play sports together. He thinks he's better than me, but I try to beat him at everything too. So it's, it's a competitive relationship, but it's, it's a really good relationship to have with a friend. So right now, uh, career-wise, I'm a personal trainer, and I really do love it because I honestly don't work a day in my life because I really enjoy interacting with people and helping them adapt a healthy lifestyle which is what I love doing, which is helping people. When a client comes in, I want to be their friend. I want to be pretty much your best friend, and not only gym-wise, but outside of that, because that goes a long way. When you build a relationship with a client, you become their friend, and 
they are able to trust you with whatever they do in the gym and outside of the gym. So building that relationship is really important because that way they really listen to me and they trust that I know what I'm talking about and that I can help them. And whatever I help them with goes a long way in their healthy lifestyle. My relationship with Jesus is, I value what we talk about in everything. He's the one person I know I can talk to on a regular basis. I know he's the one person I know when judge me regardless and loves me unconditionally. And it's just soothing that regardless of what I do on a regular basis, he still loves me the way I am. And it really encourages me to do more for him and to really work on myself as an individual to please him. Coming to Canada as an outsider, it, it went a long way building a relationship with one person because I ended up building a relationship with a lot of people and I find myself doing that on a regular basis and it's, it's a really awesome experience. I love the ripple effect that kindness has in Douglas's life. His neighbor was kind and helped him settle into a new country. His friend was kind and helped him meet a bunch of new people. And we can see how God's kindness brings people together through Douglas's relationships. I just find that so amazing. Let's break into our small groups and see what this is like in our stories.